How's it going everybody? Jake here for Dude Ranch DIY. As you can tell this morning we are down in the workshop and I got the steel MS290 Farm Boss sitting here in front of me. And uh, for those of you who have been following along with the channel, you know that this saw has been down for uh, quite some time now, a little bit over a month. Um, and it's because the piston and cylinder, the whole top end of the motor, uh, got damaged. I'm not sure if it was from overheating or what. I mean, I, I'm positive that I put oil in the gas and everything. Um, so this saw I bought secondhand. Um, it's quite possible that the first owner potentially ran it. Uh, for a, a short period of time without any oil in the gas and just ran straight gas and damaged it a little bit and then with the heavy use of cutting all the firewood I just continue, continued that damage um, but basically it's been determined that I need to fix the motor um, the, the cylinder needs to be replaced the rings and everything like that um, so I was doing some research and I had actually bought just a direct OEM replacement kit to fix this saw and then I did a little bit more research, and I found out that this MS290 uh, motor can actually accept the steel MS390 uh, like cylinder and, and, and the whole kit. And you can actually get almost a full 10cc, it's actually, I think it's like 7.5, 8cc gain um, by using the whole stock frame and everything, and it also gives you a decompression valve. So that's what I have sitting right here. Um, this is a Farmer Tech kit. It's the full kit. Um, and I did go ahead and I splurged. I spent the extra 50 bucks and I bought the fully assembled one as opposed to buying it all in pieces and having to assemble it myself. I will put a link to this kit down in the description. I got it from a company called HL Supply. I ordered it roughly about a week ago. It came last night. Um, so this morning we're going to go ahead and we're going to start tearing apart the saw and hopefully without too much issue install this new kit here and uh, turn the MS290 Farm Boss into an MS390 Farm Boss. So here is what the kit looks like. It, uh, as you can see, decompression valve up there. And it comes all assembled with the bottom, you know, loosely bolted on there. And then it also comes with a new spark plug. So now that we have this out of the packaging and everything, it appears that it isn't damaged. Um, everything seems to be in order. So I'm going to set this off to the side. And we are going to start the disassembly here of the farm boss. Okay, now before we get too far, I'm going to take my air compressor, just blow everything off. That way, uh, you know, we can be working with, uh, you know, somewhat clean saw here. Okay, I'm now gonna go ahead and take off the exhaust. As you can see, I already started loosening it, but that's done with a uh, 5 16 socket. And do be careful, there are little washers there. Okay, now that we got the exhaust off, Trying to get it without a shadow, but you can see in there into the cylinder and the piston and uh, you can see all that scoring and charring. So this saw was definitely beat up towards the end there. The last time I was using it, it was running fine, um, but then all of a sudden it just kind of stopped. So that is definitely the culprit. Now, in an attempt to stop stabbing myself on my big oversized dogs here, I'm going to be taking them out or off. Okay, so the next thing we need access to is the clutch, which is behind this sprocket right here. It's held in place by this little C-clip, so we're going to pop that out with a screwdriver 
and then we'll be able to loosen up the clutch housing. Okay, got that off. Now we can remove this sprocket. All of this gunk wrapped up around in there. Okay, so now that we have that little C-clip off, we can go ahead and pull this clutch cover. Now be careful, sometimes it can be a little stubborn, but pull that off there, and then there's a little bearing as well, so be sure not to uh, lose track of that. Okay, so now it's time to pull the actual clutch, and you can use either a 3 quarter inch socket or a 19 millimeter. Um, now keep in mind that when you're taking this off, it's opposite because it tightens itself as it spins. Um, so you're actually going to be taking it off, it's spinning it in the right direction. Um, so as if you were tightening it. So I'm going to use my impact here. And here we go. And there we go. Comes right off, just like that. Now there's this backing plate, slide that off as well, put that with the clutch. Now just one thing to note on this backing plate, not sure if you can make that out, but it says top and there's a bevel and on the back side there are part numbers and stuff. So when you're looking at the saw in this orientation, this, the top, is facing you. Just a little clarification. So the last thing we're going to be pulling out from inside here is the worm gear, which functions the oil pump. We're going to pull that out. And now this side of the saw and the clutch is completely disassembled. So now we're going to be taking it over to the other side, the recoil side. We're going to pop this cover off and we're going to have access to the recoil starter. So we're going to be using a T27 Torx to loosen up the recoil cover. On the screw that holds your chain brake, be sure not to lose this little bushing here. Now the cover just slides right off. So you can see this is pretty packed solid with sawdust, so I'm going to uh, clean that up and then we'll continue on. So now that we got our nut off, we can remove this flywheel. Um, it can be a little bit difficult sometimes, so you can actually leave the nut on just loosely. So we're going to go ahead and Rethread that on just a couple spins. You can flip your saw over with a hammer. We're going to lightly tap on this. Now this is loose. Go ahead and take our nut off. And there's your flywheel. So again, as you can see, it's pretty dirty in there. I'm just going to quickly clean that up with the air compressor. Okay, guys, now we're going to go ahead and remove the handle. You can see it's held on uh, with more of these T27 Torx bits. And there's a couple more underneath these caps here. So I'm just going to use a little pick to pull the caps off. Okay, finally got those off. They were pretty stubborn. Pretty stubborn. Now your handle comes off. Let's get that last screw.
There we go. Okay. So now that we're cleaned up, going to remove the air filter in preparation to remove the carburetor. So that's done by removing these two screws. You pull off your air filter. Okay, now before we go ahead and remove the carburetor, I'm going to drain whatever gas is left in here. Of course, it's like a full tank. Why wouldn't it be? So I got a little cup here. Hopefully, I don't spill too much. Okay. Well, I think we can rule out the fact that I wasn't running it with oil because as you can see, the color of the gas definitely has oil in it. So I think it was just a matter of uh, it overheated. Uh, we were running it pretty hot and long for that, uh, that particular day and it must have just simply overheated and uh, caused all the scoring on the piston and cylinder. All right, so now that we drain the gas, I'm going to be using a eight millimeter deep socket to remove the two screws here for nuts on the carburetor. Move the little gasket. So now with the saw on its side, I'm gonna try and get a good vantage point as far as light goes, but you can see right in here, there's a little band clamp for a slot screwdriver that holds the carburetor onto the diaphragm. So we're gonna go ahead and loosen that up. Now that that band clamp is loose, we can go in right here is our fuel line, and we're gonna pop that off the little nipple right there. Now that the fuel line's off, there's a small electrical connector right here, this yellow wire. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. Disconnect that, I should say. Okay, that's been disconnected from its terminal. Okay guys, so we finally got the carburetor and the handle assembly separate from the motor or the main body of the saw. Um, I went ahead and disconnected both of these electrical connectors and uh, pulled the grommet out of there. I pulled the carburetor away from the main plastic case to allow the connectors to fit through. Then I went ahead and disconnected the fuel line as well as took the fuel filter off of the uh, tube that goes down into the tank to be able to separate it completely. Um, it was definitely tight in there. You also have to pop out this rubber grommet that sits right up like this next to your chain brake. Um, so we got it off. You can tell everything's filthy, so I'm going to clean up here, and then we're going to continue on. Okay, so now that we got everything off and cleaned up as best as we could, um, there's a little shroud here. We're going to take this off. Um, it's preventing this last uh, mounting rod to be removed. So again, good old T27 Torx. And you just have to pull out spark plug wire from this little clip. Pull your boot. We got the shroud off. Now we can slide this last rod out. And we're pretty much down to the bare bones of it, as you can see. Okay, so one of the last steps we're going to do here is to get this stud out. So we're going to Thread on both of the original nuts. 
like so. And we're going to tighten this front one down onto the back one. like that okay so now the next step we're going to do is removal of this stud so we're going to thread on this first nut and then thread on second going to securely hold on to the back nut while we tighten up the first one on top of it and now that the top one is tight we're going to we're going to loosen up that stud and you should see the whole stud spinning not just your nuts Once you get it nice and tight, it comes out pretty easy. Just like that, we got our stud out. Okay, so now that we got our stud removed, we have four more T27s on the bottom to loosen up the engine. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. Might want to start it by hand. They're pretty tight. And now our engine is loose here within the mount. All right, so we're getting real close. Now, one of the last things we have to do is remove these two, again, T27 Torx from the oil pump. And then we're going to flip the saw over to the other side. We're going to remove this ground cable right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Now, do I dare say we have liftoff. There we go. We got it. That was tough. But we got it. So getting this out was definitely the hardest part so far. Um, everything else has gone pretty smoothly. I did disconnect this just to give myself a little bit more room. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back into place as it was, which I believe was like this. And uh, we'll continue on with this here. Okay guys, so I got this whole electrical harness and everything back in place. Now, as you can see, it's quite dirty in there, so I'm gonna clean this up as best I can, and then we will go ahead and start the reassembly process. All right guys, so I got this all cleaned up. You know, it's not perfect, but it's much cleaner than it was before. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and put this to the side. Now, I got the new motor and cylinder and everything here. As I mentioned, I paid the extra 50 bucks and I got it pre-assembled. That way I don't have to go through the headaches of putting it all together. So you can see here, it's all in there. Um, now, I did take the four stock bolts that came with it out. Um, because we're going to need to be making a gasket here on the bottom. I had to run out to the hardware store and I got some new high heat gasket maker. 
Um, but before we do that, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the two cycle oil and just very lightly kind of dab a little bit in there, just a drop on the bearings and on the crank, just that way. So that when I fire it up for the first time, there's a little bit of lubrication in there. Um, and I'll go ahead and, you know, kind of move it around. You can already feel it makes it just that little bit of oil makes it move a lot smoother. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and call that enough again, just so that when I fire it up for the first time, it's not totally dry. So now because we are going to be making a fresh gasket, I want to wipe away, clean up any of the excess oil that just got on this surface. So now we're good and clean. So now I got my fresh tube of a gasket maker. Just going to snip off the end here just a little bit. And I'm going to take my bottom piece here. Now you can see there's a uh, groove around here. So I'm just going to follow that groove. And uh, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. You don't have to apply it too liberally. Just enough so that it'll make a nice seal. Okay. So there you can see, that's my gasket. Wipe that little piece of paper towel off. And we're good to go. Okay, so I'm now going to take the bottom end and place it into the saw. Now this hole is for your bar stud, so that's going to be oriented forward, facing the front of the saw and to the right. That drops in there like so. And you can kind of see the four holes going through the main body of the saw. Now, going to take the top end and carefully place it through. And that seems to sit in there pretty nice. So now that I have this all in here, I'm going to go ahead and flip it on its side. And you're going to put in the four bolts studs to hold it all back in place. So now that we have that all in there, we can go ahead and take the bolts that came with it. Now keep in mind, the bolts that came with the kit are a different thread, much finer thread than the ones that we took out. So I'm going to be re or using the bolts that came with the kit instead of the ones that we took out. So a little bit of a change up, but the new bolts are actually a metric size five Allen. So I had to just go get that. And now we will start putting these in. Okay, so we got those all hand tight. You can see we have gasket RTV coming out the sides, which is a good thing. It means that uh, we have a nice solid seal all the way around. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to tighten these up and we will be on our way. Okay, so now that we have this all bolted and secured in, 
Um, you just tighten it, you know, the four bolts on the bottom to hand tight, and then a little, I gave it a little extra oomph. Um, there's a couple things I want to do before we go ahead and put on this cowling, just because it's easier. The first of which is one of these three exhaust manifold studs, if you remember, it gets blocked by this cowling. So the stud that gets blocked by that piece is if you're looking at the saw from the back with the handle facing you, it's on the top left and it just simply slides in to a little groove there. You can see it from the front, there are three grooves. So that one goes in like that. And then this uh, breather tube for the intake is going to go on and it's easier to put it on now rather than later. So you want the little band clamp oriented towards the top and you'll see there are two little notch cutouts for both of the bolts or the studs that hold on the carburetor so we're just going to gently pop this back on and tighten it up the flathead screwdriver okay now that that's on there nice and tight we can take our cowling and put that back in there like so making sure to leave our wires coming out the back for the spark plug and uh, all that other good stuff So now we have that all back together, like so. It's starting to look like a saw again. So now I just put the spark plug wire back in place. I'm going to be taking my wires and fishing them through here. All right, so I just wanted to show a quick close up of how this all goes because it's taken me a couple tries to remember exactly how I had everything, but um, you have a fuel line coming up from the bottom through uh, this center hole in the orange plastic there. Then you have your fuel line going to the motor that comes through the hole in the orange plastic, and that's the hole on the right. The electrical wires come through with that little rubber grommet, and that's the hole directly underneath the air intake, or the hole on the left. And this fuel line coming from the tank is going to get pushed up and back and it kind of seats back in this little orange groove like so. Um, next you're going to have your black wire which is going to, let me try and get a good angle on this which is going to come into this slot here and then be pushed back like so into place for your kill switch. And then this yellow wire gets looped up and goes down onto that tab down in there. And I found it's easier to just take the wire first And kind of route it back underneath like so and then you can take your needle nose and feed it down onto the tab that it mounts onto then you're gonna pull your excess yellow wire through and that all comes up and gets fed into 
this little slot over here like so. So that's how it all should look. Next you're going to take your little ring that goes in your air intake, seat that in there like that. And you have a washer. Not sure if you can make that out, but there is a side that says top. So we're going to go ahead and put that on the top. Don't forget to attach your fuel line over here directly to the tank. Now we are pretty much all set to go ahead and put back on our carburetor. Before you slide your carburetor on all the way, you can put on these two boots, which go on like that, and then slide into there. Now your carburetor's on need to reattach the throttle linkage like so. So now we have our throttle. So now just before I put on the nuts to hold the carburetor in place, I want to go ahead and make sure that all the throttle and carburetor uh, you know settings are set properly so I'm going to do full choke right there then flip it up to half choke then I should be able to pull the throttle and it goes to run and then off because it's making contact right there on the kill switch so just one more time Gonna push it all the way down for full choke. One click up for half choke. Pull the trigger. You're at full run. And then one click up to go off. So now that we tested it, I'm just gonna tighten up my two carburetor nuts. So now I'm gonna go ahead and replace my grounds two wires with a T27 Torx. Now we flip the saw over and we have two more T27 Torx to screw back in the oil pump. So now we're gonna go ahead and reattach the oiler you're going to notice there's a plastic swivel right there. You need to make sure that that lines up with the little nipple that's right behind this metal plate here. And then you want your black hose to be snug on the nipple on the bottom of the oiler. And then we got two more T27 Torx, one there and one there, to tighten it up. Now you notice I'm doing these by hand because... They haven't been threaded in to the block yet, so I don't want to do anything too forcefully, too fast with the drill or driver. So just going ahead and doing it by hand, nice and gently, so that we don't mess anything up. So now that our oiler's back assembled, we're going to flip the saw over and we're going to take our flywheel and you're going to notice that there's a keyway in the flywheel here. There's a keyway on the shaft, so we're going to line those up. Make sure that that's in there nice and snug and take our 13 millimeter nut. And, uh, thread that on just by hand make sure we don't cross thread anything and we're going to tighten it up this time 
it is righty tighty lefty loosey. So now that we have the flywheel in, we're going to take our recoil cover. We're going to put this back in. Okay, so now we're back on the bar side, and I just went ahead and pushed this rubber bushing back through here. Um, there is no screw there, but it does get two of these, two of these caps. So we're gonna push those in. Um, they're actually different size ones, so this is a smaller one, and there's one of them on each side. Push those in snug. Now we got our gear for the oil pump, so that is going to sit down right in there, nice and snug. Next we have this washer, so if you remember it says top on it, so that's going to go just like that. Then we're going to take our clutch, that's going to get set down right on there like so. So now remember this clutch is left hand thread, so I just swapped out the 13 millimeter for the 19 millimeter or uh, 3 quarter and we are going to tighten this up. Now it doesn't need to be overly tight because it is going to tighten itself as, uh, as it runs. So now we got the clutch on tight. Got our little bearing here. I'm going to slide that on. Now you're going to notice in this cover there's a little notch. And that is to grab onto the bar of the worm gear for the oiler. So you want to find the little bar you can see it sticking out just like a tiny little bit it's kind of hard to see but you will see it sticking out from the clutch and you want to push this down on top of it and you'll feel it click into place and we're going to take our little e-clip and we're going to push push that home so now it's on there and it's back assembled so next we're going to put the handle back on, so we'll get that all lined up. It's starting to look like a chainsaw again. So now I'm going to put in the new spark plug came with the kit. So I got my air filter on, this little guard here. Uh, so I'm ready to go ahead and put this cover back on. And now going to finally put this uh, stud back in place here. So this just screws in. Okay, so unfortunately when I was putting in this head stud or the bar stud, um, the nuts went down a little bit too far and I, I guess I over tightened it and I ended up stripping the threads on this outer side where the nuts go to secure the bar. Threads on the inside are fine, um, but it made it really hard to get that last or the first nut off. Um, so I'm going to have to order a new stud for the bar and we'll have to put that on another time. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble the rest of the saw, mostly being the, uh, the exhaust. So hit one snafu in this whole project so far, knock on wood, um, not too bad all things considered. 
Okay, final steps here in putting this back together is the exhaust. I'm going to get all these studs lined up, push that backing plate on, metal gasket. Then we can take a wire brush. Clean that up a little bit. Line up these holes. There we go, like so. Screen. And then three washers and three nuts. And there we go, exhaust back on, saw about 95% back together except for the one stud which I made a mistake on by uh, tightening both of the nuts instead of just the outer nut. Um, so that is definitely something to consider when you're going back in to tighten these studs up and you have both nuts on there be sure to only be grabbing the outermost nut not the one on the inside as well because that will cause it to strip as you can see here and you won't be able to finish your saw rebuild so no big deal I have a new stud on order it is currently on the way and we will get that in as soon as it arrives. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna do here is I'm going to be 
modifying the exhaust on the 290. Um, as you can see, it just has two little exhaust ports there, so we're going to be opening this up to allow it to breathe a little bit better. Um, that way, when we go to tune it, it will uh, have a lot more power and... Uh, Okay, so the final thing we're going to do here is we're going to be modifying the exhaust. Um, we have the cap right here, and as you can see, these two little holes are the exhaust ports. So we're going to be opening that up, allow uh, some more airflow, and uh, that should help give it some more power in addition to the new larger motor. Um, so I'm going to do this before I do the final tuning on the saw, that way everything is in check. Okay, so as you can see, I modified the exhaust, opened it up quite a bit, and I modified the little top plate as well, opened that up. So now we can put them back on the saw. Okay guys, so we're here a couple days later, and I have the Farm Boss all back together, as you can see. Got the cap on with the decompression valve. I got it all tuned up yesterday. Um, wide open throttle right around 12,900 RPM and the uh, spec is like 13,000. So we got it tuned up good. The exhaust is all ported. It's on there. I don't know if you can see that it might be a little dark. But uh, we're out here in the wood yard and I'm here with my father. Nice. He's gonna picking up more wood in his truck over there and he's gonna help me split a little bit today but uh, there's been this ash tree that has been laying here for quite some time right behind the splitter and uh, I figured might as well cut into it and uh, get this root flare off to one test out the saw and two we'll test out to see how this wood is uh, maybe in a future video I'll skid this out before it goes totally to waste and rots away. It, as you can see, it's up off the ground here. So uh, this is gonna be the inaugural cut. I just um, warmed up the saw, so I'm gonna hand the camera over to my dad and he's going to film me using uh, the newly converted MS290 to 390. So here we go. <laughs>
say that it uh, cuts pretty good. It, it feels very similar to, um, to my MS-362, and I think that's for good reason, because they are now pretty comparable in uh, power, at least displacement, engine displacement. My 362, I run a 25 inch bar. This is a 20 inch bar. Um, so I think we will get overall a little bit more faster chain rotation. But um, all in all, I think the conversion went really well and it's something that I've never done before. So I am kind of proud that I did it myself and that everything came together in the end. So um, I gotta get to work editing this video. There's quite a bit of footage, um, quite a bit of mistakes in there too. So. Um, I'm gonna get busy on that. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. Um, and for those of you that are out there that might be considering doing the same conversion, feel free to shoot me a message or leave a comment in the comment section below if you have any questions. But uh, for this one, that's gonna be it. So if you like the video, give it a big thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, help me out. Click that subscribe button down below. Um, like I said, questions, comments, feedback, throw it down there in the comment section. But I'm Jake, this is Dude Ranch DIY. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here next time.